Hi, I am Lauren from Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to paint a seascape using soft pastels. When I pick out pastels for a painting, I try to pick out hard pastels and soft pastels. The hard pastels on this uh, palette are the pastel pencils on the left and the long skinny pastels uh, that are next to the fat ones. Those skinny ones are new pastels from Prismacolor. The fat ones are softer pastels and they will layer better. I also try to pick out a variety of values of e in each color. So there's dark blues and light blues, there's dark greens and light greens, and so on. I also try to pick out warm, uh, warm and cool tones of each uh, color. And now you can see I have them labeled on the picture. Warm yellows tend to lean more towards an orange um, tone, and cool yellows tend to be more pastel. Um, cool, cool greens tend to have a more blue undertone, and warm greens tend to be more yellow based. Warm blues tend to be more have a green hues. Cool blues tend to be more purple. Other tools you will need for this are workable fixative, uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, paint brushes, uh, Bombay India ink plastic palette knives and rubber shapers. The paint brushes are just old paint brushes. They don't need to be anything fancy. Actually, I suggest you don't use anything fancy because the sanded paper can be rough on them. Uh, the paper we will be using is UART sanded paper. I believe this is in 600 grit and it will take many layers beautifully. To start off, I'm going to take a ruler and draw a straight line in the upper third section of the paper. You can use anything straight. You don't have to use a ruler. Now I'm going to take a pastel pencil and I'm going to start blocking in the land masses I see in my picture. I might angle, hold my pencil up to the picture to see what angle something needs to be drawn at and that helps give me a, a, an easier time drawing out my picture. Now I'm just roughly getting this in. The nice thing about landscapes is it's pretty forgiving. Just take your time and just block it in. Don't stress too much about it. Now I've added some purple to block in kind of where the flowers will be, so the distance water. And I'm taking some teal and I'm starting to block in the clouds or the sky, the water, and some grass. This is just an underpainting. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm taking an old paintbrush, just something that I wouldn't ever use on a painting anymore because it's just too old. And I'm blending out my picture using rubbing alcohol. I like using rubbing alcohol instead of water because it dries quicker. But if you only have water, you can use water. It'll just take more time to dry. Now make sure you use an old brush because your your sandpaper, if you if you're painting on sandpaper, um, is going to wear away at those bristles. So it doesn't don't use anything nice that you want to keep. Now the pink thing I was using is a heat tool and that is drying my paper uh, qu more quickly. You can use a hair dryer if you want. Now I'm taking a white Taclon bristle brush. This is just one that came in as a gift in a, a shipping package and so I'm just, or an order. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just using that because I don't use Taclon brushes very often. But I'm taking the black ink and I am starting to block in the shadows. Uh, I, might, I diluted my ink down just a little bit with rubbing alcohol because this picture didn't need as many darks as some of my other ones do. And I dried that off. I made sure the ink was 100% dry before I started painting. Now the reason why I used ink is because shadows can be difficult and darks can be difficult to get into your picture. Some brands make great dark pastels, but especially at entry level pastels that are more affordable, they are, it's hard to get really dark darks. So ink is a really great way to work around that issue. Now I'm starting to block in the sky. I'm using a variety of blues. I'm using my warmer blues on the bottom. So that's where the teal um, is also peeking through. And I'm keeping the cooler blues and the darker ones on the top of the sky. And that's gonna help give the illusion of distance and depth. The sky is darker on the top and it's lighter on the bottom and also tends to be more warm on the bottom. So that's why I'm keeping the teal on the bottom section. Now I just moved my board off and that's because I was dusting off, I'm um, shaking off some dust 
I have some pastel dust that I accumulated into the garbage can. And I'm starting to block in the ocean. I'm keeping my strokes horizontal. With the sky and the ocean, it's really helpful to keep your strokes horizontal. You don't want to go up and down. Be um, keeping it horizontal gives it that nice smooth effect. If you go up and down too much, it might start looking like grass or fur. So I've just got that blocked in. I'm using a variety of blues and I'm not being too fussy at this point because I'm going to be doing a lot of layers over the top. So I'm just getting the general idea of where things will go and what colors they need to be. Then I'll come back, I'll look at it, see what needs to be changed and I'll change it. And then after that layer, I'll look and see what needs to be changed and do another layer over the top. Um, part of getting a more realistic effect, uh, look is by doing lots of layers taking your time and, and comparing it to uh, your reference photo. Or if you're painting out in nature, taking the time and looking and seeing what's around you. You don't have to be in a rush. Just try to be observant as possible. Now I've blocked in some grass, um, some green for the grass and some purples and I'm blending that out with the palette knife. I use the pointed one just because it's easier to get into small areas for detail. And now I'm blocking in the really far distant landmass. I'm making it blue. You might wonder why it's blue because there's not very many blue mountains in the distance. The reason why they're blue is because things look more blue and more gray the further they are. There's not as much contrast. So I'm just trying to give the appearance that there's maybe something out there. It's not just ocean. But I don't want it to distract from everything else. I want it to recede visually. So I kept that uh, just a gray blue color. Now, now I'm coming in and adding some cooler yellows to um, the beach. Now you can see I've had some, I, my base layer was more of a warm yellow color and this is kind of a more cool color. I think adding a variety of colors and blending them and layering them is way more vis interesting visually than just getting one exact color. Very few things are just the same color. So now I'm taking a harder pastel and that's lighter and I'm just uh, a light blue color and I'm starting to block in the colors, um, the ocean waves and where the sea foam starting is going to come in. I'm just kind of adding it and then I'll blend it out or add, blend it. Sometimes you can blend a color using an, uh, an, a harder pastel. Instead of blending it with a palette knife or a rubber shaper, you can just take a harder pastel and rub it over the top and that will kind of blend it and mix and mingle the colors. So that's kind of what I was doing with the ocean a few minutes ago, a few moments ago. Now I'm starting to refine the shape of kind of the the mountain section in the distance. I am taking my brown pencil and kind of giving the impression of rocks. And then taking a softer pastel, kind of add some impressions of some more rocks and cliffs, some purples for some shadows and some blue, some blue greens to give the impression of grass being on that mountain. Now I'm just starting to add some highlights of on that mountain. Uh, looking to see where there was highlights, maybe some more sanded or areas on it or where there was flowers. Just really looking at my reference photo and seeing kind of what kind of detail was in that section. I'm taking a warm green uh, pastel pencil and starting to do some up and down sh uh, vertical strokes on the grassy foreground and that's going to start giving the impression of, uh, of grass. Just adding some um, uh, kind of a cool yellow 
cream color. Do some detail with that. Really just look at your reference photo and really kind of see what the difference are between that and yours and, and start uh, fixing it and making it look more like it. Added some darks for the shadows. Now I'm starting on this picture. Um, you, you notice I worked with the sky and then I worked my way down. And I'm just kind of starting to work my way down on the picture. And that's because pastels are a lot like uh, like oil or acrylic where you can you tend to work from back to front. So the furthest thing away from you, you do that first. And then you go the next furthest and the next. And that's it just makes your life so much easier because you're not painting around. I'm not trying to draw a sky around grass or around the mountains. I... I already have the sky so I can draw the mountain over the top. And that is going to give it a more realistic more realistic effect if you do it like that. Now I'm taking a rubber shaper and they're just these like brushes with a rubber end instead of bristles. They use them a lot in pottery. Um, and I'm just taking that and kind of blending out, pulling the, the green up and down to again start giving that grass effect. Now, you can see I, I blend, I tend to blend more on the bottom layers, but then towards the end of the picture, I don't blend very much because I want the detail and I, I want the colors to play off of each other more. If you blend it, it can get kind of flat looking. Blending has its place, but you don't want to blend everything. And that's the problem I see a lot of pastel, new pastel artists do is that they blend everything and then they never get the detail. So just remember that you blend up first, kind of get your base layers, fill in the whites of the paper, and maybe blend a tiny bit to help something look more far away because it's blurry. But then when if something's supposed to look closer or have detail, you don't have to blend. Now I'm taking a brighter green. It's such a super bright green that you probably really wouldn't find a color like this in real life. And that's okay. I'm using such a wide variety of greens and I'll be mixing um, some purples and reds and browns into the grass that it's not really noticeable if it's super bright or it's not going to be distracting. Now I'm adding some blues into the grassy area and that's going to help give the appearance of some shadows. And it's going to start making the grass have more depth and texture and dimension. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take some grays and I'm going to start applying that to the distance, uh, distant grasses to help it fall back. Again, grays and blues fall back visually. Now I forgot, I had to stop and help one of my kids for a few minutes and I forgot to turn my camera back on a little bit so you can see that it kind of jumped ahead. Um, what I did during that time was I added some more purples and violets and blues to the grass and I added some yellow. To start getting those uh, grass-like effects, I just turned my pastel onto its side and just kind of rolled it. And that will give you some nice grassy like texture. And then I'm adding some purples. Um, for the water, I added some white to kind of represent that sea foam that develops from the waves. Now I'm starting to add some pinks into the to the flowers. I did some bottom layers of purples and then did the the pink on top and that um, helps give some more dimension and give some texture adding the pink on top of the purple even though they're purple flowers helps to give some texture to the flowers. I'm starting to add some blues to help give some shadows taking a rubber shaper and kind of blending some of that out but not everything now I took some Krylon spray, sprayed it because I realized 
that section wasn't dark enough and I didn't have enough dark pastels pulled out to darken it enough. And instead of going and introducing brand new pastels, I just decided to just spray the whole thing. It makes it quicker and it keeps it more unified because I'm using pastels that are already being in, that are already in the picture. I don't like introducing new colors towards the end of a painting because it can make it not fit. It, it can make it look like it doesn't fit in the picture, I mean. So I'm just refining the lines on the beach, adding some shadows to it, and adding some... So I'm using some reddish browns, and I'll add some violets. Just looking at my reference photo, I'm adding some shadows to the water now. See, and I'm adding... There's some... The gap between the white of the the waves and the beach, I left there's a little bit of blue and it's to give the impression that the water's pulling back but and the, the sand's still wet. Now I'm adding some super bright greens for the grass Trying to keep my strokes as random as I can. You don't want all your grass pieces to look the same. If it gets kind of boring and it doesn't look as realistic. So, and I'm kind of, it's kind of hard to see with the way I have to hold it in my hand, but I kind of just rolling the pastels or dotting it. Um, since you're since your pastels are the brush, you're not using a brush, you have to take, you have to learn how to manipulate your pastels. You have to learn how to roll it or move it in different ways to get different effects. And so the only way you really learn to do that is by practicing. So get your pastels out, play with them, and experiment and see what kind of effects you can get from layering different colors and using different edges of your pastels. Now, I really like that what that dark magenta color um, did to the painting. I added it to the flowers and to some to the shadows and some to the water and it really helped the whole picture kind of pop and stand out. I'm adding some blue greens to give some shadows to that grass and some highlights. If you're having a hard time getting your brights to be bright enough on your picture so like if, if you were doing this and your white wasn't really standing out, that means that the colors next to it aren't dark enough. Your, your highlights are, is probably bright enough. It might even be brighter than what it is in your reference photo, but the colors around it aren't dark enough. And that's what's making it hard to get that contrast. And I'm adding some yellows, um, some kind of yellow dots or blobs, and that's to give the impression of yellow flowers. There's some yellow flowers in the reference photo. Um, and so I just did a few of those to kind of help give some more texture and dimension. I try to keep them a different shape and look than the purple ones. I don't want it to all look the same. Now, after I shook off my uh, board, because I was starting to get some pastel dust build up, I am peeling back some of the tape that was holding my paper down and starting to blend in some pastel into those white spots. I don't like the halo that the tape can create. In fact, I usually don't tape my pastel papers to the board. I lots of times will just use push pins if I'm using a foam core board, but I am using a, th a thick piece of like, like cork, uh, not cork board, like a thick uh, chip board. It's what they back uh, watercolor blocks blocks with and I'm just using an old one of those for this piece and so I had to tape it and use some clips to hold it down. So I'm just peeling back the tape, blending it in. This will make it easier to frame because you won't have the halo or the obvious sign of the pastel didn't go all the way to the edge. So now I'm just kind of took a step back, realized the pastel picture wasn't quite dark enough in some spots didn't have enough contrast. Since it was a big section, I just sprayed it with the adhesive, uh, this fixative. Now I'm adding some yellow, 
some greens. I'm almost done. Just the final touches. Adding some blues. And some grace to, just to give the impression of texture on the rock that's going that are going out into the the rock wall that's going out into the water. There's some light pinks. The last couple flicks to help make the picture how I want it. This is the really fun part of a painting is when you're really starting to just analyzing what can make that picture better. And it's kind of like the, the frosting or the sprinkles. You're just sprinkling in the fun details that turn it from something average to something exciting. I'm just going to darken up the last two sections quick where I want it to pop a little bit more. And now I am, I took a magenta uh, pastel and I'm si putting my signature on because I am pretty much done. I might fiddle with a few last things. And that is it. Well, I think it is it. I'm never really done. There we go. And here is a close up of the finished painting. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to get more detail about the products I used, and get a link to the reference photo, click the description box below and I have a link to my website where I go into full detail about this. If you enjoyed this tutorial or my other tutorials, please like this video and click subscribe so that you can uh, get more in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.